What's up, y'all? My name is Brandon. Welcome back to Unbroken Studios. And I know I've been gone for a little minute, but I got someone in my comment section requesting to make a Dennis Rodman t-shirt. So I'm going to do this one on screen. And let's hop straight into the video. All right, so I got this picture of Dennis Rodman from Pinterest. Nothing too different, nothing really too major. I pasted it and I pasted it into Photoshop. That's where I make all my designs. So first things first, I'm going to try to uh, get rid of the background so we're gonna go with the floating head look as you've seen so I'm gonna go on with the pen tool and just go around the area just to cut out the image I'm gonna try to make this a different design and when I say different I don't mean like just making the same exact design and then just changing it to fit my brand no what I'm gonna do is not just changing it to fit my brand, just slapping my branding on it. It's not gonna be the same design, just slapping my branding on it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add different elements in different typography. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting out the image, use selection tool, make sure you use a mask and don't just delete the layer. That's a non-destructive way to do it. After that, just clean up the edges Right here, I use a soft brush, which will kind of look weird once the design is done, but the damage is already done. So make sure you use that mask. And as you see, I'm just going in and just cleaning up the selection a little bit. All right, cool. So now we got the floating head. What we're gonna do is usually what I do is I make a duplicate of a layer just in case I wanna go back to the original. Then we're gonna go to filter gallery. And here, what I do is I add a stamp and we're gonna make this effect called a color halftone pattern. So you're gonna add the color halftone pattern You can adjust it to the way you want. It's gonna look different depending on how light and dark your image is. So you can always adjust that. And I add two stamps, two stamp layers on top of that. And this is my final product. Then what I do to isolate the black in the image is a technique I always use on this channel. I go and I select the shadows. I make a new layer and I fill it in with black. Simple enough. Then now you see I can now draw behind the, the black layer. So what I do is I turn on the original layer that I made a copy of and I use the eyedropper tool to select the color. And I make it just a shade darker. And now I could color behind the black dots. So all I want to do is go ahead and start filling in the skin tone.
Okay, now with the skin tone filled in, mostly. Don't worry about it if you mess up, because we're gonna add this design is mainly distorted. So you can always go back and just change or erase or add things you need to add. But make sure every color, every color in the design or in this floating head is on a separate layer. So what I'm gonna do right here is I made a whole new layer and I go in with a darker brown color for the lips. I fill in the lips. Now, as you see here, I changed the color halftone pattern a little bit. The dots was a little bigger than expected on the last one, so I made them a little smaller. But it did lose some detail. I'm now filling in the brown accommodating for the smaller dots, you feel me? Next, you want to choose a new layer and now you want to fill in the jewelry. I just fill it in with like this gray color, not too major. Cut you <laughs> now I changed the color halftone pattern one last time. This time I added a vertical as well as a horizontal layer. So it's like this, uh, it almost gives this checkerboard kind of pattern. So next what I do, as you notice the design still kind of feels flat because there's shadows, but there's no highlights. So a big part of making this design successful is adding the highlights to make it more look, to make it look more realistic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the original layer and just trace over where his highlight should be with a shade lighter than the original skin tone. So I add the highlights to his nose, his brow, his forehead, his ear, things of that nature. I also realized that his lips was more of a pinkish purplish color in the actual picture. So I just go back and I change the color with that, with the layer styles. Now I will make a new layer. I'm gonna label it hair. So I know which is the hair and I can go back and change it later. So first I use this blonde color, which I'm pretty sure I remember seeing Dennis Rodman have a blonde hair at one point. So I go in with like this like dirty blonde type of color and make sure you put the hair layer below the skin tone layer. As you see now, it'll, it'll, it'll just look a little more clean. A lot more clean actually. Then over top the hair layer, 
I'm gonna make these green highlights. And I'm going with the soft brush. So from here, you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can add custom um, patterns, different colors. You can even put your brand name in it, like like you know who. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of possibilities. I'm just showing y'all pretty much how you can get the same look in the design. Also, this design is just a concept. It's not a client project or anything like that. It's just something something just showcasing the ability to make the design. So now I'll go back in and I'll clean it up with the eraser tool. Okay, now make sure you group everything together that you did so far. And I go into my custom uh, typography book where I have some sketches. I'm using this typography right here. All I do is I take it into Adobe Illustrator and trace it with the pen tool. You can do it with the pencil tool and Photoshop, but I just like the pen tool and Illustrator just a little better. Now you want to paste your custom typography or custom font into Photoshop. And then you wanna add your layer styles. Now this is what makes the design uh, pop out. This is what makes the typography pop out. So you wanna add those contrasts and colors and strokes and this and that, and just to make it pop out of design. Next, what I do is I free distort the typography that I made. So you can get a unique look. Cause if you use a font and distort it the same type of way, it's ultimately gonna yield the same look. But if you use a custom font similar to this one or something that you have drawn, it's always gonna be different. It's always gonna be unique, different look. Again, I'm adding another stroke in the layer styles. You can do whatever you want, but I think that looks pretty good to me. Again, group everything you have together so you know which is which element. So next, I get these stars from Illustrator using the star tool. Again, you can use it in Photoshop, but I just like the way you can distort the stars in Photoshop. And comment down below if any of you know if you can use the same distort tool in Photoshop. I'm not sure. But yeah, I just hold uh, Control and Shift and distort the star out. Also, my computer's glitching. That's why there's like specs on the screen. But yeah, so I go in Illustrator and I use the free distort tool to distort it a certain way that I, I liked in the design. So that's why I got it from Illustrator and pulls it into Photoshop. And then to copy the layer styles from the previous, you just hold option and drag the effect to the smart object that you just pasted into Photoshop. Again, I just do the same thing, copy and paste layer styles and paste stars into Photoshop. There's really nothing too major. Next, to tie everything together, I wanna use a drop shadow. And you can use this with the, uh, with the brush tool just to draw in the background, but I think it will look a lot better and a lot more cleaner using a drop, a drop shadow. 
I use this blue color because I think it ties in all the colors of the design and I add noise to it. All right, so this is the final product. All I did was add a couple of adjustments and some text above his head. And uh, for the back of the shirt, I just went with something real simple uh, with the same sort of typography and the same sort of color palette just tying in the front and the back of the shirt. And that's about it. I haven't been too consistent lately because as y'all know, I'm in college, but I'm working on getting my commissions back open very, very soon. And I'm also working on my consistency on YouTube. So I will be dropping another video and I'll see y'all there. I'll catch y'all next one. Peace.